So the internet is about to rock your world. There's a big opportunity coming, and we're here to help you see that opportunity so you can decide whether or not you want to participate in it and whether or not it makes sense for your organization. Uh, my own background in this space was in 1992, I co-founded a company called Emotion.com that developed the first digital video collaboration platform that was called Creative Partner that was used by hundreds of studios around the world and I think it even is today as it's become part of the open text uh, platform. So what are we talking about today? This conference is about the collision between television and the internet. And we all know what the television is because we have one in our living room and our bedroom and our workout room and what, whatever else. But what is the internet? We take it for granted in some ways. We talk about it as a thing. But what is it? What holds it together? And why does a network that connects billions of private devices like this through millions of private networks look like one place? The answer has three components. Number one, domain names. Number two, internet addresses or IP addresses. And thirdly, a techie thing called the protocol and parameter settings of the internet. Those three things together are the unique identifiers of the internet that makes this very complex network look like one place. ICANN is the organization, the multinational organization with an international board that was established to be the custodian or servant of the policy development process and coordination for those three aspects of the internet. And what I'm here to talk about today is one specific change in the domain name system of the internet, which is the opening up of the right of the dot. So the dot and what's to the right of it are called the top level domains. Think .com, .net, .uk, or .tv. Those are top level domains. There's only about 300 of those in the world. And ICANN was created in part to open up top level domains to have more choices for consumers and to allow innovation to occur. There's 300 top level domains and there's about 2.1 billion internet users, so you can do the math. Uh, I'm in the midst of a road show. This is the 14th country that I've spoken in since September the 10th. As we're communicating to the world this program, because we're not here to advocate that anyone participate in the top level domain program, but we want to make sure that we educate and that parties are aware that the program exists so that you can decide whether or not it makes sense for your organization. Now, what does it mean? When the top level domain zone opens, it's equivalent to you being able to apply for dot almost anything. So some of the parties that have mentioned interest are parties talking about dot Berlin or dot Canon, as in the company in Japan, or dot Zulu. I received a letter from the chief of the Zulu tribe just over a year ago in which he shared that, that his people were scattered across many countries in the world in many different regions, but they wanted to have one place for their community, community to connect on the internet, and they therefore wanted to apply for dot Zulu. And while we don't have opinions about any potential applicants, that's just to give you an illustration of some of the ideas. And for some organizations, it's an issue of dot company name or dot brand, for example. The program has been developed over six years of arduous policy work in the global internet community. And there's many protections in the program for rights holders, including the holders of trademarks and service marks. And, and some of the world's smartest IP attorneys have been working on these issues for years. But the global community came together and it reached a consensus and the ICANN board approved the program in June of this year in Singapore. Uh, what are some of the costs of the program and some of the downsides? Uh, the costs are $185,000 to file an application. That represents our estimated break-even processing fees as a nonprofit service organization. Uh, but the costs of developing an application are higher than that, as you might use lawyers, consultants, work with technical advisors. You might well spend a half million dollars just in the application process. What's the cost of operation? It's not for us to say, but some of the experts on the outside say perhaps a million to three million dollars for uh, basic level operations over the first 10 years, including that application process. 
So the program will open up next January 12th. We'll close on April the 12th. If you want to participate, all the information is online at www.ican.org. If you click on new top level domains, there's a microsite that includes the 300 some page rule book for the program that we call the applicant guidebook and has a whole set of different information. And in mid-May of next year, we will publish the list of applicants. The names of the firms that have applied for top level domains and the strings as they've applied for. We don't know how many that's gonna be. I've been on this road show and I've heard from some experts, they think there'll be several hundred applications. I heard from another expert that they expected 4,000. Uh, probably it'll fall somewhere uh, in between the two. But you won't know who in your industry has applied until that May list is published. Uh, and when that list is published, will be after the application window has closed. So we're, we're here to educate. The program exists. Uh, the rules are online. And we would encourage you to at least consider whether you want to participate or not. Specifically, if you're running a company, I would encourage you to share the information with your chief marketing officer, your chief technical officer, and your general counsel to get their view, to have their analysis of this program and whether or not you want to participate. So if you do want to participate, you're going to need to act fairly quickly. And uh, so when the internet rocks your world, you're ready to roll. Thank you.